Good day, welcome to Unity with Heaven. My name is Joseph and today I'm with Amy and Kimberly and we're going to take some time today to minister to 10 people. So uh, I looked on the comments of the last three videos and there were some people that wrote their names in the comments and asked for a prophetic word. There was also one or two people that really blessed me, uh, especially from a financial point of view. And I just wanted to say thank you to you guys and minister to you. And I know I have ministered to all of you uh, in the past, but I'm going to sincerely listen to what the Lord says to me. And uh, even if I just give you a word of encouragement, I'll do that. But I want to bless you. Uh, and then, um, let me just quickly look on the list. Yeah, it's, it's, it's people that, that I love, people that, that has written their names in the comments uh, and people that has blessed me. And so I, I made the list of 10. So what I do is every single day I go back to the comments uh, of the previous videos where we minister to people. And uh, if there's names there of people that say, I would like to receive ministry, then I just make a new list and then I'll sit and minister to them. Usually I'll get either Amy or Kimi or Amy and Kimi to help me to minister to those people. All right, so um, the first person I would like to minister to today is Cindy Burton. So Cindy, what the Lord showed me is two clouds. The one cloud at the bottom was like a gray color and it was difficult to see through it. Then there was a second cloud on top of the first cloud, but this cloud was white and full of light. And then the, the Lord gave you a ladder in the midst of these two clouds. And you climbed through the gray cloud, which was lies or believing lies uh, uh, or some kind of deception. And you climbed up the ladder towards God and you went into the white light and that was full of life, full of truth and revelation and answers for your life and i believe that the lord is saying to you the more you listen to him the more you engage him the more you spend that time every day and allow him to speak and you climb up that ladder to go to the lord and meet with him the more you're going to shed the lies and the deception of the past and you're going to walk in the the light of the glory of god of the truth of the good future uh, that the Lord has for you in your life. And I just see how that gray clouds can't stick to you. The closer you come to God, the, the more His glory sits upon you and the more you have revelation and healing and joy and you take up your position as a daughter in the kingdom of God. God bless you. Cindy, the Lord loves you very much. And I really feel how the Lord is just wrapping you around in like this blanket of um, just calmness and so much rest and then I saw a picture of how you were riding a horse and you were going very fast and obviously to slow down a horse you would need to like um, people would like go into a circle and I feel the Lord says don't stop um, the momentum don't feel like you have to hold back and make that circle the Lord says keep going and I'm with you and I just feel how the Lord is really giving you courage in this time and then I saw a picture of how you're holding God's hand and it was like um, you know God is the God is the um, the vine and we are the branches and I just saw how you were really connecting your hearts with the Lord and that's going to bring so much victory especially I saw financial victory when you when you spend more time with God. I just feel the Lord says he's opening up a door of provision. God loves you, Cindy. God bless you. Amen, Cindy. Please leave us a comment. This next word is for Kenneth. Kenneth, the Lord shows me how he's giving you um, the seed and the Lord says that I want you to plant this seed and the Lord shows me how you're going to have to go out and find good soil because right now where, where you are or just like the Lord says, this is not the soil for this particular seed because um, some like plants grow in different places. Some people grow in different places. The Lord is saying that this seed needs to be planted in this place or in that place. The Lord will tell you. I hear how the Lord is so close to your ears. He is speaking to you. All you have to do is, is like declare that your ears will hear the word of the Lord because he is speaking to you. Be blessed. So Kenneth, the Lord showed me when you grew up that the enemy tried to build in you a fighting spirit. And so you, it's almost like a war spirit that would sometimes come over you. Um, I don't know if it was even anger. 
uh, but you were still very strategic in the things that you did. And then the Lord came and the Lord rescued you and he took out the old heart of stone and he put in you a heart of mercy, a heart uh, that is full of love, a heart that forgives even if someone sins against you a hundred times, you keep on forgiving them. And so the Lord has completely changed you. And I see how the Lord says, many of the ones that once considered you, your enemies, they didn't want to work with you is coming close to you and you're going to be able to speak God's word to them. You're going to show God's love to them and draw them into the kingdom of God. And so on your on your mantle, the Lord has given you a pastoral and an and evangelistic anointing, but not a shout and power evangelistic anointing, an anointing of love and of grace that's on your life. Bless you, Kenneth. This next word is for um, Ari. Um, Ari, God loves you very much. And while praying for you, I just feel um, God is really giving you strength, just like he gave Samson strength. And God has called Samson to be a protector of his people. And I just feel the Lord has, has placed a few people in your heart, that, um, especially young people that you feel like you need to protect and be there for. And I just see how you pray over them. And it's like rings of fire are around them, just like the um, how God placed the ring of fire around the Israelites before they crossed the Red Sea. So I just feel the Lord says keep on praying because I just see in the spirit how you are like really blessing them with like a shield. And then I just feel how the Lord says for you that he's going to fill you up. There was a lot of giving in the last few um, past the past weeks it was just like a lot of giving but i just see how you go into the secret place go into like that garden with god and and in your quiet time and how he just really refreshes you and fills you up ari god loves you very much god bless you so ari uh, the lord immediately when i closed my eyes the lord showed me uh, your front door and in the front door is a small little door for a dog like a doggy door and you know those doors you get some of them that can only swing in one direction or the other direction or you can have one that swing in both directions you can also set them and i saw that you had one of those all right and then i saw how you walk to the doggy door and you lock the dog doggy door so that the dog can't come in anymore and so i felt that dog represented um something that the enemy is trying to bring into your life and that you allowed for a while to be there because you are merciful and you are lo loving and you're kind and so that dog came in but it's actually not supposed to be in the house the lord hasn't actually called that dog and so the lord gave that doggy three chances to and you showed mercy to it maybe not three chances maybe a hundred chances but lots of chances and then I felt that the Lord says the grace has run out for that doggy. And so now you you close the gate and you say that that um, thing that comes and robs and steals in your family is not allowed to be welcomed in your house anymore. And now you lock the door. And so you you say, now I've, I've showed to you mercy, but now I'm going to speak to you truth. And so now it changes. The, the, the grace was just limited. All right, remember, uh, all grace that God gives is always just for a period or a time or a, a season. And, and then we use that grace to mature or to rebel against God. And so this person that represents that dog has used up their grace. And so now it's time to close it. And so, but you say, but I love that person very much. And then the Lord says, just take them and give them to me. And I will create another environment of grace again for, for them where they can have a second chance. But in your life, that grace has stopped. Okay, so this is quite a, quite a weird and a long, hard word. But okay, so let's go on. The second thing that the Lord showed me was a new carpet. So I don't know if it's like a living room or bedroom carpet, but I saw that that carpet uh, was uh, old uh, and worn out. And it was quite hard. It's like sometimes they put the carpet straight onto the concrete. So it's very hard. And then I saw how you get the carpet guys out. They rip it out. And they put a very thick felt underneath the carpet. And it was a nice lush carpet. And so now when you came into, walk on that carpet, it felt so glorious 
that you just want to lie on your back on that carpet and you just want to soak in the presence of God and you just want to soak in the, the love and that comfort that that carpet gives to you. And so the carpet represents a new season, a new atmosphere, um, a new um, time period, also a new time in your relationship with God and even with the family with one another. And I felt that the Lord says, I'm putting in your family house a carpet of love. And you're just going to see how the love between you and uh, your family members just rise up to much higher levels than before. And it's just because, um, I don't know if it has to do with that doggy that's not allowed to be there anymore, uh, but it's definitely a, an anointing to love one another, even if you can call it the heaven atmosphere that the Lord is putting in your house. That's what the Lord showed me. Ari, please leave us a comment. This next word is for uh, Stephen. The Lord shows me how he is telling you to, to, to fix your posture. I hear the Lord saying that you need to approach this as you are approaching almost like, like, a, like, like a wall, like, like, like a mirror that you're like, okay, I'm going to stand strong now because I'm like representing this amazing, amazing God. And the Lord says, that is how I want you to live your life. You are presenting presenting him you are showing him this is the lord this is his love this is how he cares for us and this is his um his power to show his power in your life through um the miracles and especially for finances the lord says that i'm going to help you break that 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 financial lack in your life when you when you walk in that authority and that posture be blessed uh, so stephen the lord shows me your heart and then I see one chamber of your heart is working very well. The other three chambers of your heart are working, uh, but there's limitations on them. It's as if they are slower and the one chamber kind of have to make up a little bit what the other three chambers are not doing. And then I see how the Lord touches your heart and how he heals your, your heart. All right? Now, I, be, I believe this has more of a spiritual meaning than it has a physical meaning. I feel you are kept in two or three areas in your own potential and in the way you operate. All right? uh, and then the one area uh, where you are full of love, uh, where you are full of life, um, you have to kind of make up for the other areas. Uh, it could have been something in the past where you overexerted yourself, where you hurt yourself, and that's why you in those areas maybe don't have confidence or strength or you're not operating at full capacity. And I see how the Lord puts his hand on you and how he brings healing to you from your past. Uh, and I actually see uh, even um, uh, tears coming out of your eyes and how you reconcile with your physical father. Now, I don't know if your physical father is still alive and if you guys are working together, but I just see how there's a hurt in you that the Lord is healing today. And the Lord says that that hurt is not going to be passed on to your children, but that, that hurt uh, is, is being dealt with today, is being put under the blood of Jesus. The Lord is bringing full restoration to you so that you can live up to the potential that the Lord has for you. I also felt that you feel that you have to uh, perform to earn, I don't know, the favor of God maybe. Um, because you know God loves you. Uh, but I just felt that the Lord says, you are going to perform and you are going to do well and you're going to do great exploits for the Lord. But it's because you are a son of God. He's given you the authority. He's given you the mandate. He's giving you the resources. He's making you a leader and you're going to do great things for him because that's who he made you to be. And that's not because you need to win his approval or his favor he's already given you his approval and his favor the lord loves you very very much hey may god bless you Stephen. this next word is for anthony anthony the lord loves you very very much and i i really feel how the lord has really given you a calling to be like this farmer to whatever the lord gives you you will grow and i just feel how there's a lot of growth and multiplication god is giving to your life because you've been the word says when we're faithful with the little god will increase um, um what we're working with and, and then i saw um how the lord was like inviting you for like this um like this dinner it looked like a wedding ceremony 
and then you had like this very fancy uh, tuxedo in your house in your cupboard but you were like hesitant like save you know when we have this one thing and we save it for a very special occasion and I feel like you've been saving this for a long time but the Lord says now is the time I just see and I feel like it's like a, a mantle like an anointing upon your life um, something that you knew in your heart that you needed to do and you're like when am I going to do it and the Lord says now is the time and I see how um, instead of wearing those those old farming clothes because obviously you wouldn't wear your best clothes when you're out in the fields I see how you place on this um, this 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 um, fancy suit and I just feel how the Lord says I'm clothing you in my glory and I'm cl clothing you in my excellence and I'm calling you to be a leader of people that's going to rise up in excellence God loves you Anthony and I just feel there's just this, this gently uh, gentle father, fatherly love that God is bringing to you God bless you God loves you so Anthony what the Lord shows me is a squash player and he loves playing squash and you know if you um, um, hurt yourself in squash and you get maybe like a tennis elbow or a squash elbow then um, your, your shoulder gets it can easily get frozen and very sore and it's difficult to play and then you don't enjoy it anymore and so I see these things that you've done that you really enjoy but it's almost as if it's lost a little bit that joy that you got out of doing that and then I saw the Lord push a pause button on that maybe you went and played squash two times or three times a week with a friend or uh, you had were part of a club or something like that um, and that's paused and then the Lord says now because you have all that extra time available now I want you to write and then I saw you start to first just journal your relationship with God but then the Lord had you move into um, an architect's office and you were starting to draw out an architectural plan and that was a plan a strategy that the Lord has for your life for the life of your your family members and so the Lord says you need to have vision for your own life and for your family members and then once you had vision and you implemented steps to um, uh, to take each one of your family's lives in the right direction so that they can fulfill the blueprint that God has given to you now suddenly there was time available again to go and do that thing that you love now I, I don't know if the squash that I saw is something that you actually love doing or is that just a metaphor for something that's taking up a lot of your time instead of uh, aligning yourself and your family members with the vision that God has for your life. But I felt that the Lord says He is running in that extra time that you use and He says, first get each one on track and in pointing in the right direction with the vision that God has for them. And then you can go back to using your time uh, on the fun things that you enjoy to do. God bless you. Amen, Anthony. Please give us a comment. The next word is for Christina. The Lord says that uh, He wants you to operate in wisdom, yeah. in His wisdom. And, and, I, and the Lord shows it to me like wear your seatbelt in the car. That is what the Lord is saying to me. Like, and, I, and I think this is really just like for you to imagine like I'm, you're in this car or this, this, this is all like um, a, a way of the Lord of an example. You're in the car, you are driving. And even though you are a good driver and you are, and even though you have like missed so many accidents in your life, still wear your seatbelt. And I feel like that seatbelt is the word of the Lord that you don't just start driving. You don't just start, I don't know, counseling people. And you don't have the word. You don't have that seatbelt on, that protection. Because the word of God, it protects us. Because when we know the word, we know his heart. And that is what the Lord wants for you. He wants to give you his heart that you can share it. And he loves you so much. Be blessed. Yeah. Christina, the Lord shows me how you stand there and how your mother walks to you. And she puts her arms on you, she, uh, around you. And she starts to hug you and she holds you. And as she holds you, the love of God pours into you and the darkness, the fears, the, the worries, um, the insecurities, um, even maybe the um, maybe feeling I'm not good enough, all of that just 
drains out of you and you are completely filled with the love of God. And I even see how the Lord comes today and he puts himself over you like a mother and he just holds you and he affirms you and he says to you that you are my daughter. I love you. You are my daughter. I love you. And uh, I, I, I see how the Lord um, change um, uh, uh, a, a facial expression of I got to push and I got to grind into a facial expression of peace and rest and not having to fear about the future and having the joy of the Lord upon your life. And so just receive today. And, and I think you can even go back to this prophetic word and this vision. And every time you start to feel insecure, just let the Lord's love come and embrace you and just affirm you today. And I feel you need to go through that process quite a few times just to get yourself um, to receive that, that mantle of, of boldness, that, that uh, assurance uh, that you are a child of God and that the Lord will help you. Yeah, that's what I felt. God bless you. Um, um, Christina, God loves you very much. And what Kimberly was saying about the seed belts, I, I really feel how the Lord is clothing you with His armor. And um, we were we were talking about it. I think um, Friday when we were talking about how do you put on the armor. It's not like a whole declaration thing. Okay, thank you, Lord, for the sandals of peace, helmet of salvation. It, it is like um, it, it is like spending time in the word and letting that just receiving that meditating on that and then that really um it really is an armor for you so i just feel the lord is just like kimmy said i just felt that was so spot on um and and i received that for me too this next word is for um brenda brenda the lord loves you very much the picture god showed me for you was how the lord gave you all of this wool but it was like different materials different types of wool and how the lord says okay i'm cool i'm calling to make this and i find wool so fascinating because it's like when people crochet on it it's like they go through every single strand and when the when the, when the bible says god knitted us um in our mother's womb i just feel the lord is saying to you how precious you are and how i've really been so intentional with your steps i'm so intentional with your life um, um brenda and i just feel how the lord has given you all this brand new wool and material that you are going to make something so meaningful and that's really going to really show the heart and compassion of god and i feel like there's been a lot of striving and stress going on. How am I going to do this? But I just feel the Lord says, you're going, the only way you're going to be able to do this is in a place of peace and in my presence. So God is just drawing you into his rest and his peace. God loves you, Brenda, so much. God bless you. Hello, Brenda. So the Lord shows me how in your life, there is lots of people that ask, please help me. Um, young to old. And some of them are close and some are not close. Um, and you say, well, I'm really trying to just have my own life be successful and do the things I need to do. I don't always have time um, and resources to give to all of these people. But then I see how the Lord connects you to a house, a support, provision, cable or, or connection point. And there's just resources and time and kindness flowing into you and suddenly you are able to give to all of these people but then I see each time you give to someone you turn it from a gift that you gave to the person to the person starting to walk in the gifts that God has given that person so it's almost like you activate you know a lot of people come and say I want to receive a prophetic word then I say okay let's come together and then let's practice and I teach them how to prophesy to one another. And now they receive plenty of prophetic words, but they also have the gift activated in their lives now to start to prophesy. And that's the same for anything in life. You, you have children, and in the beginning the children says, feed me, but later on you teach your child how to make food and to feed the rest of the family. And so there's like a maturing. So I felt there's two things that God has given to you. He's giving you supernatural provision to give to the ones in your life that ask. And instead of saying, no, I can't help you, you can help them, number one. And number two, the Lord is giving you a mentorship 
anointing so that you can help the ones that are struggling and that says, please give me, uh, please help to help me. You can help them to activate their gifting so they can start to become operational in the kingdom of God. And so um, that mentorship is almost like a, a coaching. You know how a coach work in the beginning, I'm taking full responsibility for you. Now I'll show you how to do it. Now you have to take responsibility. Now I will give you advice, but I'm not the source anymore. And now I can let you go. And so it's like a process uh, of mentorship uh, that you're going to take people through. And so I felt that the Lord says that you don't have the ability to forever to keep on supplying to all of these, but you have the ability to turn uh, a question into an answer and into an exclamation mark. And so that's part of the anointing that's on your life. But I felt that the Lord says, don't say, no, I'm not going to do it. I can't help you. The Lord says, I will supernaturally supply resources and time to you so that you can be kind to people and you can help them and you can mentor them. That's what the Lord showed me. Amen, Brenda. Please leave us a comment. This next word is for Miss Emery. The Lord shows me how, how you need to, in the secret place, just get undignified before the Lord. How you just release everything. He knows everything about you. I hear the Lord saying that, my daughter, I want you to come like those children that just want to want to be by me. There's nobody there saying, no, you can't. He is calling you as a child. You are his child and he wants you to be with him. I see how you dance with the Lord. And, and, and I feel this is, this is a calling for, this is a time for the secret place. This is a, this is a, um, this is an ordained time that the Lord wants to have with you in the secret place. That deep fatherly love. I hear how he says, I want to hold you. I want to care for you. I want to, I want to give you that, that thing that you have been asking me, but you need, he wants you to be there the Lord shows me how he's putting so much into you. He is sowing into you. He is loving on you. And this relationship that you have with the Lord, he wants it to be a, a dual relationship that you are yoked together and that you can praise him because he is the king of your heart and the Lord over your life. And he wants to bless you. So I hear that secret place is calling you to go deeper and deeper. Be blessed. Amen. God bless you. So Imri, the Lord shows me Abraham and Lot. And so Lot was living close to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. And then Abraham was living in a mountainous, mountainous area. And then I think it was four kings that were attacking, you know, five kings were attacking them uh, as really tribal leaders. Uh, and then the, the, the uh, five, I think the four kings were fighting against them. Uh, and in the process, Lot and his whole family was taken, um, was captured uh, in this war. And so then Abraham found out about this. And then what Abraham did, he got his servants. There was not that many servants, like three, four hundred servants. And they went and they fought the battle against these five kings. And they were able to retrieve everything, including, including Lot and Lot's family and Lot's servants and also his goods. Okay. Uh, and then that's just straight after that when when um, Abraham met Melchizedek and he gave him a tithe uh, and he um, had communion and then he met with the, the, the five kings and they wanted to give him a, the, the goods. And then he says, I don't want you to even give me a sandal strap because I don't want, don't want any one of you to say that you've made uh, Abraham wealthy because the Lord made him very wealthy. Right? So now, Imri, what I felt in your life is that you have chosen the mountain in this area like um, that, like Abraham did. And the enemy has come against uh, your family. Now, I don't know if that's friends or is it close family? Is there other family? Um, I don't know if it's Maxine and Walter. So I, I'm not sure who that family is. But I see how you get your, your, your prayers and your faith and your army together. And you go and you go up against the, the enemy that tries to uh, destroy your family and you save them and you bring back. And then the Lord blesses you and the Lord has communion with you, just like Abraham um, had communion also with Melchizedek. And I just felt the, what the Lord shows me, that you are bringing salvation to your family. Okay, So that's the, that's the vision I got 
gave me. Okay. So then I asked the Lord, okay, remember there's a vision, you know, there's a story in the Bible just a little bit later where these three men in white linen came to Abraham and they said, in a year from now, you're going to have a baby. And I asked the Lord, so Lord, when is that going to happen if if uh, Emery's life fall into this storyline of Abraham? And then the Lord said to me, that will happen, but it's not happening right now. So, but anyway, I, I just asked that question and I'm just telling you what I saw. Um, but I really believe that the Lord has given you a lot of faith and the Lord is going to make you very wealthy. He's going to bless you financially, but he's also giving you a lot of resources so that you can fight uh, the battle against the enemy and you can save your family that those people like lot in his family can also represent people that's close to you or people that god puts on your heart or give you a responsibility to take care for uh, uh, on a spiritual level but i really believe that the lord is making you very wise and very resor- uh, resourceful god bless you Auntie Emery, this next word is for Maxine. Maxine while well, pray for you the picture god showed me the the words god showed me for you was peace ideas and fragrance and i just feel how the lord is giving you like this whole new wave of peace but also when you come into his presence there's a lot of ideas and strategies that god is giving you for your business and i saw the picture you know the woman in the bible that that made purple dye and purple linen and sold it to kings and i just feel the lord says just like that woman was successful selling to her um her her stuff to kings i just feel that's the same promise god has with you and it was such purple dye was so precious and I just feel the Lord says what you are making your calling is so precious and then um, and then the next thing fragrance I just feel that you are like just this beautiful um, and you really are this beautiful fragrance of and, and I just feel like in everything that you do it's like this beautiful fragrance of worship to God and I just feel the Lord is like even um, pouring like more like oil and and just perfumes over you and uh, Maxine I, I really feel that there's a big strength that God is giving you now in this time for the task that he's given you he loves you so much keep on being a beautiful fragrance um, to the Lord so Maxine I see the apostle Peter who was a disciple of Jesus and how he had tremendous zeal for God he had boldness he could preach the word of God he could speak with anointing And I felt that the Lord is putting that same leadership anointing upon your life and a lot of zeal. Now, we know when when Peter was younger, he didn't always have the most wisdom also, uh, but he had a lot of zeal for God. And he was the one that climbed out of the boat and walked on the water. He wasn't scared uh, to sink into the water. He was the one that went with Jesus and saw the transfiguration of Jesus. and, And he experienced amazing things. Now, on the night when Jesus was betrayed, and uh, this, the Romans came to capture Jesus. Then what Peter did, he took out his sword and he chopped off one of the ears of one of the guards that came against Jesus. And then Jesus said to Peter, put back your sword. Um, because if you live with the sword, you're going to die with the sword. And then he picked up the ear and he healed the Roman soldier's ear right there. Now, it's, it's always funny to me when I read that story, because all those Roman soldiers just saw Jesus heal a ear that was chopped off. And in spite of that, they still captured him. I, I think if I were a Roman soldier and I would see a miraculous healing like that, I would like, you know what? I, I can't judge this person. Okay. But uh, they, they still captured Jesus. But uh, what I felt that the Lord says is that someone will come maybe against Walter or um, against your mom or yourself and you will feel but this was not fair and you're going to want to take out your sword and you want to chop off that person's ear okay that means you just attacked him and i felt that the lord says if you will live by the sword then you will die by the sword and then the lord go and he heals that situation so even if you made a mistake doesn't matter because peter made a mistake by chopping off the ear jesus still fixed it all right and so even if you made a mistake you're forgiven the lord loves you he will fix it but then we'll see later in the book of acts that where peter walked even his shadow would heal people he would walk into towns and there would be such an incredible healing anointing on him and so you know the one that used to chop someone's ear off is now doing even 
greater miracles uh, that even his shadow heal people uh, that has uh, you know uh, leprosy and are dying and are sick and so I felt that the Lord says that he has called you to walk in the power and the glory of God and so don't allow a small thing uh, come into your heart where you have um, offense or where you feel you cannot forgive them we have to fight back uh, I felt that the Lord says is just let that fighting spirit just say no to it and say I'm going to show mercy and I'm going to trust in the provision and the supernatural power of God to bring healing in a situation, even if I felt it wasn't fair. Because I'm sure all the disciples felt when they wanted to capture Jesus, but this is not fair. This man has just done good things and now they want to capture him. And I'm sure you will also feel those same feelings. But I just felt that the Lord says, I've called you for higher things. I've called you to walk in the power of God. And you know, uh, Peter ended up writing uh, three books in the Bible. Yeah, he wrote. No, no, only two, sorry. First and second Peter. Uh, uh, the book of Mark, that would be the third book because he he told Mark what to write and then Mark wrote the gospel. Um, but he became one of the leaders in the council and when they were resolving problems, Peter was part of the solution. And so the Lord says, Maxine, you are part of the solution and I've called you to be a leader. I've called you to be full of glory and full of the power of God. God bless you. Amen. Ms. Maxine, please leave us a comment. This next word is for Walter. Walter? Walter. <laughs> the Lord shows me how his hand is so, so on your family and on your marriage that the Lord says that you are going to have to put your foot down because the enemy is going to come and try all of his sneaky lying things to break apart um, all of the good things that the Lord has placed into your life. Because I, uh, your, your, the, I feel like this is for your house. This is for like your home, your your wife, your the the whole future of your home. The Lord says, I want you to learn to put your foot down, to take authority over the the um just the the spiritual realm of the of the the darkness that's going to want to try and come in because you are the priest of the home you can say no you cannot come here the blood of jesus is on our door frame you must just pass us by i hear that's what the lord is saying for you he's saying that there must be a place and a time for you as a family to dwell in his presence you are not separate from from the presence of the lord that, that your home will be a place of love. And I hear the Lord saying that you must teach your, your, your future children how love is, how to see the love of the Lord in your marriage, how you treat people, how you treat them, the love of the Lord, but still that fatherly authority that the Lord has given to you as the priest of the home. But I really see you, you standing at the door of your actual home and putting your foot down saying, you can't come in here. This is a place where the glory of God is and this place is holy and darkness cannot come where there is light and where it is holy. Be blessed. Amen. God bless you, Walter. Um, that was so powerful. I just really feel how the Lord is. This is like a brand new season in your life. And I just feel the Lord is really giving you like a double portion of his of his love and his anointing. God bless you, Walter. And then I also just saw a lot of like strategies that God has given you. Uh, Walter, God has given you a lot of strategies for um, business. I just feel the Lord is really going to bless you with your business. God loves you. So the next word is for Walter. So Walter, I see that you have a certain expectation, but then um, you work and you put in the hours and then what you expected in terms of promotion and growth didn't happen. But then over time, uh, maybe two or three years, then there's lots of small promotions and lots of small little breaks and just blessings that comes to you and then after that two or three year period you see okay i've actually been promoted all the way i wanted to go but i every time i had to choose to be humble and eat up people's immaturity and i felt they didn't stick to exactly what they say they were going to do uh, and you Every time just said, you know what? It's fine. I'll humble myself. I'll have a smile on my face and I'll do that work. 
But the Lord says, as you stay, uh, stay faithful, He is the one that promotes you. He's the one that puts you in more authority, that leads to you more finances, that builds your character, that helps you to bring peace in a situation. You know, the Bible says that uh, blessed are the peacemakers because they will be called sons of God. And I feel that the Lord is giving you a title that you're a peacemaker. And the Lord says, you don't have to fight for your promotion. I will promote you and you'll see that you will you will be promoted and you'll get favor that other people felt. But wow, this guy should not have had this favor, but you still get that favor. So that's what the Lord shows me. So um, uh, walk in humility, enjoy and love and be a peacemaker. And then every single time you're going to end up being that one that comes out at top and walks with the favor of God on your life. And, and I just want to encourage you, People cannot promote you. God is the one that promotes you. But God does two parts. The one part is He builds your character and the other part is He promotes you. And I see how you have in your life very um, closely together grown those two areas in your life. You were not promoted too quickly, but you also didn't grow your character too quickly. You were every time willing to humble yourself and to say, I will stay disciplined. I will listen to God. I will listen to correction. Uh, but then in the same way, then the Lord also kept on promoting you. And I just see this continuous flow of growth. And I believe that anointing that's on your life is also going to be one day on your children, how they're going to just very gradually succeed because of that discipline to say i'm not going to rebel against god but i'm going to stay humble i'm going to stay um teachable and um um obedient uh to to what he says and always choose the path of uh, grace choose the path of forgiveness of making peace uh, and, and in that process the lord is going to protect you and keep on promoting you I said, that's what i saw walter the Lord loves you very, very much. Family, it was a great honor for me and for uh, Amy and Kimi to minister to you today. So um, uh, I, uh, I'm i still in the process of healing. So what the doctor said to me, uh, he wants me to try to sleep, if I can, 20 hours or 18 hours every day. So what I do, I wake up early in the morning and then I'm awake for about two or three hours. And then I go and sleep. And then I wake up in the afternoon and then I'm awake again for two or three hours and then I sleep again. And so that's what I do. And I have to do that for six weeks still, <laughs> the, a total of nine weeks. Um, because um, when I had the impact on my head, there was a layer of blood that formed on my head. And um, the only way really to solve that is to, um, to sleep. And um, although thinking is not bad, uh, but too much of that will cause pressure on my brain. So I'm not allowed to watch anything. So I can't watch a YouTube video or television or something on my phone or even, uh, you know, really receive WhatsApps and things like that. Claire has my phone uh, all the time. But it is good for me to have a little one or two hour sessions where I just kind of put a little bit of pressure on my brain to say, hey, you got to function right now. You know, so that's, so uh, yesterday I went to Walter Bell. He's the doctor, he's a, he's a beautiful uh, man of God that's here in our town. And he talked long to me about it that I, 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 I have to try to push a little bit, uh, especially in the area of my brain to be creative. And so one of the uh, best ways I think for me to be creative is to tap into the anointing of God. Uh, so um, I woke up maybe 30 minutes ago. So if I seemed a little bit asleep during this uh, session, I'm I'm still waking up. I haven't eaten anything or, or anything like that, but it's a healing process for me. Um, and the whole time God is speaking to me, He's working with me, He's showing me things. I'm experiencing a part of God's love and His grace that I haven't done before. Uh, I'm also um, a lot more emotional than, than I usually are. Uh, I sometimes cry and that's very unusual for me because I don't cry a lot. Um, so, uh, but uh, God said to me, it's a two weeks ago when I was allowed to be awake. He said to me, I want you to prophesy every day to 10 people, all right? So, uh, and that's the, 
that's the process that I'm going through. And I think it's part of my healing process. So if you feel you getting a lot of prophetic words and you didn't even ask for it, um, uh, I believe uh, it's a way how I can bless you, but it's also a way how you bless me because you give me the opportunity to, to flow with the anointing. And as the anointing of God flows through us, it also brings healing uh, to us. Uh, so, um, yeah, I want to say I, th I love each one of you. Um, I thank you that you are part of my life. And I'll, I'll see you tomorrow again. God bless you.